Hey guys, how are you? So, somebody asked me, what's the first days like when you first start a job as a developer? What can you expect? Well, it depends on the size of company you are going to be working for. So if you're working for a larger organization, uh, there's going to be uh, more formalities, there's going to be more of a run-up, I would imagine, and you're going to be working on uh, smaller parts of a very large project. When you work for large businesses, typ typically, not always the case, but typically you're working on old code bases that have been around for a while, and you may be hired, brought in to, I don't know, work on some, some aspect of the UI. Or you may be hired to just write a, some uh, back-end uh, code to uh, you know, run a back-end process or fires off every night. Uh, it's a totally different game when you're working for large organizations versus small, generally speaking, and in, especially so if you're starting off as a junior developer. Uh, you as a junior developer are going to be uh, at the bottom of the totem pole because it makes sense because you're learning you're still a beginner you're new you can't expect to take over the project when you haven't written much code and so you're going to be uh restricted in terms of what you do and highly highly regimented uh, type of lifestyle which is cool for some people and it works well especially in the beginning you have to expect that because you're new you're learning stuff if you're going to be working for a larger organization excuse me a smaller organization yes there's going to be that um period where uh, you're going to be working on parts of an app, but you're going to learn a broader set of uh, coding experiences, if you will. You will get a broader access to code much more quickly, simply because, again, in small businesses, you have a different experience than large businesses. So you, you will find yourself, when you're working for a small company as a junior coder, exposed to a lot more more quickly and there's less red tape less, less bureaucracy uh, you're going to deal with that's generally the case so uh, that aside uh, generally speaking when you're a new coder you have to expect to be uh, uh, restricted in terms of what you do which makes sense right they don't want you screwing up any code you will uh, be uh, followed much more closely people are going to be watching what you do and how you work especially the first few months where you're probably going to be on some sort of probational period where they want to make sure that it's good working with you you're able to actually get the work done as, as you know and they're hiring you to do something so you should be able to do it um yeah, that's about it. As you gain more experience, as they trust you more and more, you will get more autonomy, more more uh, freedom, especially in smaller organizations where you might where you will likely have access to a broader aspects of the code base. So uh, you know, it really depends on what you want to do. So it really depends what you want to do. So I'll give you an example. I have two friends of mine, and they're highly experienced developers. One works for a small business, one works for a huge business. Person working in a huge business has meetings all the time, uh, works on a very small sliver of an application. Like I said, recently he was working on something uh, just to implement some sort of a report generator. They just, had to, they just had to change a few aspects of the report, but it was like lots of uh, documentation, and meetings, and implementation meetings, because you know when you have a big system where you may have millions of users, you have to be very, very careful about how you implement and so on. On the flip side, you have somebody else who's just as experienced working for a small company, and they have tremendous autonomy. So they're given a project, and they basically work on so much of it on their own, they just got to hit deadlines. And so they don't have nearly as many meetings, not nearly as much bureaucracy, and they, and they have a lot more freedom in terms of how they write the code, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas uh, when you work for a larger organization, you're much more restricted. So I'm going off on a tangent here. Um, it's important to understand the differences between large and small pro uh, companies in terms of your career as a developer. Anyway, going back to the original subject, when you are a beginner, you got to expect that you're going to 
uh, be under a tighter leash, right? And uh, they're going to be watching you, especially the first three months or six months. You're going to have much less autonomy because they just want to make sure you know what you're doing. So there you go. That's what to expect. Uh, less autonomy initially. Uh, tighter control in terms of your work. Uh, it's less autonomy. Um, you're going to have um, less choices to make. They're going to tell you specifically how to do, how to implement. And uh, just everything's tighter. And that's, again, you're a beginner. That's normal. As you gain experience, you're, you'll give it, you, you will be given more latitude in terms of what you do in terms of your uh, coding. And there you have it. Most people would agree that it makes sense to wear a mask. The problem is it's hard to breathe in the mask. So, you know, I've been a software developer for decades now. And I thought I would use the power of my nerd brain to come up with an innovative solution to allow me to wear a mask, but still be able to breathe properly. So uh, I figured it out. I put a lot of thought into this, and I'm going to show you my solution. I'm still able to wear my mask, and I can now breathe clearly. Thank you.